Okay, welcome back. You're listening to the weekend edition of the Portland Economics Report. This segment, as most of the segments on this weekend's show, are originating from Manhattan, uh, the Hard Asset Investment Conference. Chatting right now with Yale Simpson. Uh, we're going to talk about two of Yale's companies, uh, Exeter Resources and Extore Gold. Interest of full disclosure, Big Al's got to say a couple of things. I'm a shareholder in both the companies, okay? I, I purchased those shares through the Encompass Fund uh, in uh, San Francisco, my buddy, my buddy Marshall Barrel and his uh, co-portfolio manager, Malcolm Gisson, a couple of very, very good guys. That, fu that fund, by the way, has performed very, very well. Exeter is also a sponsor uh, on our website. What does that mean? That means if you want information about either company, Exeter or Xstory, simply click on their banners on our website. Last but not least, uh, Yale and his lovely wife, Donna, are close personal friends of Kathy's and mine. You can't get much more dependent than that. Let's talk about Exeter first. What's going yeah. on there? I think probably everybody knows the profile of Exeter, wouldn't they? But just a quick recap, you know, it's, it's this big porphyry. It's 19.3 million ounces of gold and 4.6 billion pounds of copper. I think we've spent about $17 million on the project. We put uh, two pre-feasibility studies, one last summer. Mm -hmm. Uh, one on a uh, one in February the seventh, uh, January the seventeenth. So we've shown how that project could be built. We, we've shown that it can produce uh, the big study seven hundred thousand ounces of gold a year for nineteen years, two hundred million pounds of copper, etc. But I think probably most important, given given where the world is in terms of credit access and what have you, we also showed that uh, we could build that project a lot smaller mm -hmm. and build it and produce 200,000 ounces of gold a year, a uh, much different profile of a project. So so what are we doing today? Oh, we're, we're doing uh, what we call optimization. We're actually drilling for water as well uh, on a site north of Caspiche in Chile. As you know, Chile is short of water. Chile is short of water. If you found an, if you found a lot of water in Chile, it might be worth more than gold is right now. So, I don't know about that, but okay. No, just in terms of strategic, sure. strategic right, asset, right. water in Chile is strategic. We, 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 we've been trying to find our own, rather than buying our company, try to find your own. Sure. So, um, on that front, um, we're drilling from water. We're doing. We just finished some other drilling on metallurgical holes and all that stuff. So, so what we're doing is, because we have 60 plus million dollars, we're using that money quite judiciously, all right? Oh yeah. To show, to add value to the project. We haven't committed to building anything at this point in time. Um, that isn't a decision we're ready for, which is probably just as well given these markets. You know, I'm you know, sure you're rocking and rolling here. Right. So our view is um, continue to de-risk it. Don't spend all your money. Uh, we've got to be in a position where if we had to sit on this asset for 10 years, sit on this asset. You can do it. You can do it in Chile. By the way, in some of the jurisdictions, you can't. Right. In Chile, you can't. Yeah, let me ask you a question. You know, there's been some criticism of late uh, pointed towards Exeter, and, and, and the criticism seems to stem from the question uh, of why hasn't anybody JV'd that? Why hasn't anybody tried to to buy them out. Now, that's a, a, a fairly vocal piece of criticism that's out there. How would you respond to that? Um, the first one is easier to answer. Why, hasn't, why haven't we JV'd it? I want to mean joint ventured it to somebody, kept a participating interest, and let somebody else spend the money? We've never offered it to anybody in joint venture. That hasn't been part of our business plan. Okay. Could it be? Yes. Is it today? No. It hasn't been, okay? So then the other thing is, you say, why hasn't somebody taken you over? Now that's a really difficult question because there's a lot of process there, and we've said for some time, there are certain major companies who have access to all of our data on a confidential basis. They have agreed not to make a hostile run on the company, et cetera, et cetera. So, I'm not going there. If you say from a generic point of view, how come something hasn't happened? Because we've been very careful um, in that process to, to say what is the project really worth and where do you optimize the value? 
and that we've all often said, when these projects are engineered, they're worth the most money. The companies that make the most money on them, whether you're Ross Beattie and in, in, in his copper deals or what have you, is you do all your engineering, then you wait for the markets to al align in the right space, and when they do, they're worth a fortune. In this scenario, Al, we're a bit unlucky. We got to a position where we've got an engineering document that came out in January, but since January, the markets have been heading generally south. Yep. So we got one duck in a row, and I don't control the capital markets. Okay. So, you know, if they both align, there you go. So we're in a situation where the, the cycle is kind of moving against us. But we'd always said, and we said to any potential suitor, we want to get this engineering out there because on historical transaction basis, that's when you got the most money. We have had over a dozen companies under confidentiality provisions looking at this project. There's no shortage of lookers, okay? Um, so that's kind of where we're at. Let's, let's go a little farther east. Let's go down to uh, Patagonia where uh, the Saramoro project is. What exactly is going on right now with the Saramoro is, is the flagship asset of uh, Extore Gold. What, what exactly is going on down there now? Why do you think it's a good property, first of all? Well, you know, it's always, again, there, there's one that's really very, very April the 2nd, we put out economics on that. Uh, where are we at? I mean, you know it's um, 1.4 million ounces in indicated category, another million ounces in, in inferred category. Um, the on-site activities, if you go down there, you'll see four rigs operating, two of them on engineering, two of them on exploration. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, you know, last year we added a million ounces to the Right, company. right. Is there another million ounces out there to buy? We believe so. So we still have that active program going. The, the, in Argentina with respect to the mine development type activities, uh, we haven't made any decision yet to mine it. We're not quite ready to make that decision. Are we getting closer to being ready? Yes. Okay. Um, what's interesting in that study we put out on April the 2nd, it, it modeled producing 248,000 ounces of gold equivalent a year at a cost of about $278 million. Okay. That was a sensational right result. You bet. Very high rate of return. I think internal rate of return, 63%. You know, way one of the highest margin projects out there. Um, some things in Argentina conspired against us with respect to the to the nationalization as it is of YPF. Um, some people have taken a view, well, that's that's going to happen to mining companies. Um, and yet, all the existing producers have all been in total denial mode that that's on the agenda, whether you talk to any of them, from Gold Corp on, total denial mode. And it's easy for them to deny it. If I deny it, people may or may not believe me. Go talk to Gold Corp, what their view is on Argentina. You know, you know <laughs> what, I find, what I find to be interesting about, about some of the uh, comments that are coming in on Argentina, you know, you had a situation where uh, a Spanish company, if I'm not mistaken, was nationalized. Repsol. Yeah, Repsol. it was nationalized. Energy industry, the, the rationale behind that was that the offshore company did not live up to its uh, agreements with the Argentinian government. Uh, I'm not an expert on that, but I know uh, I, the one geologist in this, in this business who I really, really respect, okay, a guy named Brent Cook, and Brent has spent a lot of time in Argentina, and Brent has told me over and over again, Argentina is not a bad place to be. You need to be cognizant of the ver uh, of the state, if I'm not mistaken, regulations, okay? But in, in general, on a national level, Argentina is a pretty darn good place to be, particularly Patagonia. You know why? Because you don't have any environmental issues down there, and that's very important. Okay, interest of full disclosure again, remember I'm a shareholder here, got to be aware of that. Remember this is not investment advice, I'm not a registered investment advisor, I'm not telling you to buy the stock, I'm not telling you to sell it, I'm telling you I own it and I have no intention of selling it. If you want more information on either company, click on their banners on our website. The one thing I can vouch for, Gail Simpson is an honorable, well, well educated man in this industry. We're going to be right back.